One problem with investing is even if you found a great stock, it might be too expensive to buy. And that's the situation we're in today. There's a lot of quality investments out there, but most of them are overvalued. The stock market's P.E. ratio today is roughly twice as high as its historical level. Should you invest in the stock market today, even though you know you'll be overpaying? Or should you keep some cash on the sidelines and wait for a pullback? Everyone has their own opinions on this, but personally, I found a very effective way to address this dilemma. It lets me basically buy a high-quality company without overpaying for it. And in today's video, I'm going to demonstrate exactly how I do this by first figuring out how to determine the fair value of a stock, followed by selling a put option to make sure that if and when I do buy the stock, I pay a reasonable price for it and not the current overvalued market price. I'm going to be using BlackRock today to demonstrate how this works. This is the world's largest investment management company and offers the popular iShares ETFs. It currently manages about $9.5 trillion worth of assets. It holds stocks, property, and other interest in just about everything on the planet. And that's not an exaggeration. BlackRock is one of the largest shareholders of JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo, which in turn gives BlackRock a lot of influence over the financial system. The company also owns a significant portion of banks in Australia, Europe, and other parts of the world. But it's not just financials. BlackRock is the second largest shareholder of Pepsi, Johnson & Johnson, Nike, and it owns more Apple shares than Warren Buffett's company. And it owns more Berkshire Hathaway than Bill Gates' company. BlackRock is also involved in mining, energy, and lots of other industries. And if you have a pension fund, chances are you are being invested with BlackRock or in a fund that is connected with BlackRock somehow. But just because a company is ubiquitous doesn't automatically make it a good investment. So the first thing we have to know is, is BlackRock even worth investing in based on its fundamentals? So this is TD Web Broker, and I'm going to use this today as well as Yahoo Finance to do some research and look at this company, BlackRock. So I'll figure out, is this a good company to buy long term? Because I don't want to own it for a day or even a year if I don't want to hold it for at least 10 years. So I need to look at the long term metrics, the long term financials of this company to make sure it is a good, uh, strong business with a wide moat and it's growing its revenues and its earnings, as well as I need to figure out what is a good entry point for this stock because I don't want to overpay for something. So going down here to the reports, there are a lot of things I can look at. Uh, there's insider trading activities, there's valuation reports, different kinds of analysis that we can go through. So I'll look at this one first, the Morningstar Quant report. And this gives me a good high level overview of how the stock has performed and also the valuation metrics of the stock. So right now Morningstar thinks it's worth 862 and it's trading currently just over 900, so it's slightly overvalued, but uh, still within the fairly valued range. But down here is the important information. This is 10 years of financials for the company. Uh, the two things that I really want to pay attention to uh, are the revenue and the uh, diluted earnings per share. So looking at the revenue first, it looks like it is growing every year since 2011. You want to see growing revenue or sales. So the next thing I look at is the diluted earnings per share. And it looks like it is growing for the most part. It dipped a little bit in 2016, uh, but then it bounced right back up the next year, dipped a little bit in 2018, and then continued to grow. This year's not finished yet, so we'll have to see the results. But overall, it looks like it is very profitable and it's growing that profitability right so that's the important thing and 10 years ago it was making 12 and last year it made uh you know about two and a half times that so that is a good trajectory overall uh, again it doesn't have to grow every single year but as long as the overall trend is going up and it looks like it is then that's what i want to see so this tells me generally that it is a good company. There's a few other things that I would look at, such as net income, uh, operating margin. I don't want that to go you know, too low uh, because it means the company can't control its costs relative to how much it's uh, making. And then down here, we have some valuation metrics. 
like so price to sales uh, that's definitely getting more expensive now than it was 10 years ago price earnings as well but a lot of this is due to uh, printing money a lot of this is skewed especially in the last couple of years uh, and then equity uh, return on equity this is kind of important as well you don't want this number to uh, continually be going down if it's just stable uh, or in this case it looks like it's going up so that's actually really good uh, and then also return on invested capital this is important as well and same kind of rule you don't want this number to be going down what this means is if you give the company like a hundred dollars uh, last year, they gave you back $12.45. So that's a pretty good return on invested capital. So if this number is really low, like five or six, then it means the company isn't doing as much with your money as it probably should. Uh, but in this case, it looks very healthy there. So overall, this is a very good company to hold long term. Um, and now the question is, at what price should this company be worth right now? So let's look at a different report. Uh, Thomson Reuters stock reports. This is generally a good one to look at. We can see it's PE right now, 24. That's kind of high. Uh, return on equity, institutional ownership. It's not necessary for this number to be high in order to be a good stock, but it's good to see that there's a lot of institutional interest Valuation is kind of on the lower side, which means it is quite expensive, according to this report. But what I want to look at is this number right here. So the average projected price of BlackRock is expected to go to $974. But what I'm interested in is what is the most pessimistic analyst thinking here? The person with the lowest projection says that this stock in 12 months from now uh, will be worth $794. So I'm going to add that to the top left corner just to say this is what the worst case scenario would be according to 11 different analysts. So the next thing I want to look at is the valuation. And down here, relative valuation in this section, over here they have some charts. And the trailing PE here, this is the price to earnings ratio. You can see it is quite high right now at 24. Uh, but the five-year average is around, uh, looks about just over 19. So it is definitely more expensive than the average. And right now it is 24 divided by 19. So it's about 26% overvalued relative to its five-year average PE ratio. Uh, let's take a look at another one. So I'm going to take a look at the valuation report. This is from Refinitiv. It shows growing earnings per share. That's good, but we already knew that. Down here, it has the annual EPS trend. So this year, uh, 38.6 is what the company is expected to earn. And down here, we can see a graph of the historical PE. The blue line is the trailing four quarters. So that's basically the PE ratio. And it is definitely very high right now. So I wouldn't be buying this at today's PE ratio of 24. I think anything over 20 would be overpaying. And you can see in March of 2020, it dipped to something like 12 times. So that would have been a really good buying opportunity, 12 times earnings. But 20 times earnings and above, I think is too expensive. Um, the average over the last five years, as we know, is 19. So a quick way to figure out what this uh, stock should be worth today is to just take the current or this year's earnings multiplied by the historical average PE ratio, 19, and that gives me 733. So I'll just put that up in the corner. So that's good. It's kind of a margin of safety knowing that if I were to buy it at the price that I think is fair, it's still cheaper than what analysts are thinking. I'm going to take a look at the Argus analyst report. This one's pretty quick. It just goes over some analysts' uh, notes, like what they're thinking about the company. Is it a buy right now overall? And then down here we have some uh, projected growth, one year, five year for the earnings, and also dividend growth. So we'll circle back to this uh, dividend uh, later. This is another Argus report. This one is just quickly showing the growth rates over the last five years and over the last three years. 
there's uh, revenue growth. So five years more important than three years, which is more important than one year. One year is almost, it's not that statistically uh, significant compared to these two. So in five years, the company has grown its revenue by 42%. That's really good. Operating income also going up. Earnings per share up 61%. The share price doubled over the last five years. That is really good to see. But we already know this, like this company is a great long-term hold. It's just not particularly a good price point right now to get in because if you buy it at the current market price, you are paying for 24 times its current earnings, which is kind of expensive compared to previous years. Heading over to Yahoo Finance now, going to look at the stock chart. I have this purple line here representing the 50-day moving average and the green line is the 200 day. And I just wanna make sure that uh, the purple line is above the green line. So it is still going up, which is a, a bullish trend for this. Going to look at the analysis and just wanna make sure this is similar to what I saw in Web Broker. So for the current year, we have the average estimate being 38.7 for the earnings. So if I take 38.7 times 19 times earnings. So if the stock goes down to 735, I'd probably be a buyer at that price today. And finally, I'm going to look at the forward uh, dividend yield. So this tells me what the company is paying out in dividends. And right now it's 1.83%. Um, but that's if you buy it at $903 at today's price. Now, if I change this to uh, if I were to buy this at, say, 735, then I would be paid the dividend divided by 735, 2.2% uh, dividend yield. So that's important because my current margin rate is about 1.5. Now, if you do a cash secured put, the dividend of the underlying stock doesn't matter too much, but because I'm selling a naked put, I want to make sure the dividends from the stock is enough to offset the margin interest that I have to pay on the borrowed money to buy the stock. Interactive brokers will currently charge me 1.58%, and if I buy BlackRock at $740 a share, the dividend yield on that will be 2.23%. So that looks like a decent spread to me. Even though I'll be buying on margin, I consider this to be a relatively safe investment, especially when BlackRock has a history of increasing dividends over time. All right, so that basically takes care of uh, all the fundamental analysis. Uh, I'm just gonna jump into technicals here and just to see overall how this is going. So far, we've established this is a good company to hold long-term and also, we've calculated a fair value for this company that it should be trading at today that would that I would be comfortable owning it. Um, the technical analysis kind of tells me now, in the medium or short term, is this trending up or down? So short term, there's nine bullish signs and five bearish, so it's going up. Medium, it's more balanced, two bullish, two bearish. But recently, it's been more bullish than bearish. So overall, that's a good sign. So what I'm going to do using this information is write a put option for BlackRock or basically sell a put option to a willing buyer. So this kind of gives me a little bit of uh, income because I would be earning the premium on that for selling the option. And also if the stock does drop to that price, I would be comfortable owning it at that price. So I will jump into Interactive Brokers this is the IBKR desktop application. And I'm looking at uh, BlackRock. It's trading at $904, but I'm not looking at the stock. I'm more interested in the options. So I will bring over the options chain. This is just a table showing me the strike price down the middle. And I'm interested in the put option, so the right side right here. Over on the top right, it shows me the IV. Right now, it's not very high. Usually, BlackRock has an implied volatility around 25 in the mid to 20s. So it's probably not the best time to be writing an option on uh, BlackRock right now. But you can say the same about most companies because the S&P 500 is reaching, uh, it's, it's getting very close to all-time highs again. 
So usually I like to sell options that are two months, maybe between one and three months away. So I'm going to choose December 17th. This is about two months away. So I would pay 735 or 740 for this stock. If I click on that, it takes me to the option entry here. And it says the latest price that this option was traded at is $2.60. If I go uh, one strike price higher, 750, okay, I can see it's 295. So you get a little bit more money if you're willing to pay a little bit more for the stock if it gets assigned. I don't want to choose a higher strike price just because I want the higher premium because if the stock does fall to that price and I buy it, I'd be still overpaying for it. I'm looking between seven. 30 and 750 I think within this range I would feel comfortable buying it and looking at the bid size compared to ask size it looks like 740 seems to be a good uh, balance so to sell this option I will hover my mouse over this uh, bid at 740 and click that'll take me to the entry form I want to sell one and right now the price is between that it's it's quite wide that range so I'm going to choose uh, the last one traded at 260 so I will choose three you know maybe something kind of high just to see if it'll go through let's go with 3.01 so it's saying I'm going to make uh, about $300 if this goes through if by December 17th the stock price falls to 740 or below I will need to pay 100 shares of that is $74,000. So that's something to keep in mind. This is a highly priced stock, right? Okay, so that's put in. So right now, um, somebody's saying uh, they're willing to buy this for a uh, dollar and ten, and somebody else is saying they'll they're willing to sell for three ten. So if I put mine. To 285 let's update this and see if it goes through well I'm going to leave this here and maybe come back to it later if it doesn't fill and lower the price so it's been about 90 minutes my trade hasn't gone through we're later into the trading day and you can see the spread has gotten thinner it's at 210 to 265 so 215 so I need to lower my price if I want to sell this maybe to 26 261 259 okay I'll leave it at 259 for now and my order has been filled at 2.59 so I made $259 minus the commission, 25 cents. The important thing is to not pick a strike price that is too high, that you think it's too expensive. So for me, $740 is, I think, a fair value to pay for BlackRock today, which is why I set that as my strike price. Now, by the time this option expires, let's say the stock goes way up to like $1,000. And if I write a put option, then I would still pick around 740 or 750. If it goes up to over $1,000, that just means it's way overpriced. And sometimes stocks can stay overvalued for a very long time. And if I continue to sell options on those increasingly expensive stocks, then my premiums will be lower. But that's okay, because I would rather earn lower but consistent income than to risk overpaying for the underlying stock. So if BLK shoots up to 1200 and continues to increase in price, then yeah, I'll miss out on all those gains because I didn't buy the stock today. But I mostly long the stock market anyway, so chances are the rest of my portfolio will also be up a lot in that scenario. So I'm not really concerned about that. The main thing is to control for the risk that you want to take. And that's why it's so fundamental to understand how to price a stock properly. Basically, figure out what the fair price is for business and then note what your upper limit is that you'd be willing to pay for that company. And in terms of price movements, the opposite could also happen. 
What if BLK falls to $600 by December? Well, I don't mind picking it up for $740 per share because that means the stock is probably oversold for some reason. And eventually, the price will go back up past my purchase price because that's what great companies do. They increase their profits over time and that is ultimately reflected in the stock's price. So this is a good strategy to use if you like a stock, but it's just currently too expensive. And what this allows you to do is wait for the opportunity to buy the stock that you want at a price that you think is fair. And while you're waiting, you're getting paid. So that's always nice. And if you're doing a cash secured put, it means the money that you have saved up isn't just doing nothing. It's earning you a yield, which is the premium that you get from selling the option. And you just keep doing this until you essentially get assigned the stock. But at that point, it's fine because you would have paid that price for it anyway. So I hope you learned something new about BlackRock today or found this video interesting and helpful. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.